Hi, I'm Bob Schmidt with Home Remodel Workshop. I've made videos on how to lay out, on how to build your walls square inside a space, how to build plumb walls, how to put your framing members in so your wall is nice and flat. But it's been brought to my attention that I never actually showed how to do a typical 16 inch layout on a stud wall. Let's get to work. A couple of basic tools that you're going to need to do a typical plate layout is a couple of straight plates, of course, one representing a top plate of the wall, one representing the bottom plate. But the other tools that are going to be required is either a framing square or this is called a speed square. Uh, either one will work for doing what we're going to do. When doing a typical layout for a wall as to where you're going to put your studs, first thing you do is you lay your two plates next to each other, your top and bottom plates, so that they're nice and flush here on the end. Just about every standard layout tape that I've ever seen has these red marks at the typical wall stud layout. A typical mistake someone makes is they say, oh, well I'll go ahead and I'll mark the 16 and then I'll put my stud to one side or the other and we're going to be good. These marks are for centers. So basically what you have to do is since the width of a typical wall stud is an inch and a half, which is three quarters and three quarters, as your tape's hooked on the end of the board, Go ahead and make your first mark at three quarters back from every red stud mark. So that would be 15 and a quarter, put an X over top of where the red is. Then come down to 31 and a quarter, put your X over top where the red is, and 47 and a quarter, and so forth and so on. So every wall has to start with a stud. You automatically just put an X on the end of your wall, your beginning of your wall. Then you go ahead and take your framing square. There's a thin side to your framing square. There's a fat side to your framing square. The thin side of your framing square is exactly the same as an inch and a half typical stud. So what you do is you take your framing square, line it up on your first mark over top of both plates, and you put a mark on both sides of the framing square. You put an X in between both of them, and you know when these plates go into place or when you're building your wall, that wall framing stud needs to sit right between these marks. A very good question to ask would be is, why do I have to concern myself with laying these out 16 inch on center? Why not just throw enough in there that it looks good? Well, there's several reasons. Uh, the, the basic, most important reason is most building material comes in two foot increments. Drywall comes in four foot widths, eight foot widths, or eight foot lengths, 12 foot lengths. If you start a sheet of drywall in this very beginning, when you get down to the other side, that sheet of drywall should break right in the center of a stud, having you ready for the next sheet to come off. But you also have to concern yourself with what goes in the wall. Insulation, for, for one example, is designed to have exactly the right size to fit in between a 16 inch on center layout. Not only is insulation a concern, but also medicine cabinets are designed to fit in a typical 16 inch layout as our ironing board fold downs, as our pre-made pre forms for tile backers in showers so that basically a single piece can slip into this space and, and give you more of a watertight and time saving in putting some of your stuff together. Another huge advantage about sticking with a 16 inch layout is there's a lot of things that go on the outside of the drywall on this wall too. Well, by the time it comes time to put down baseboard or put up crown mold or anything that's going to anchor cabinets to the outside of this wall, uh, it's nice to know where the studs are because those are your anchoring points. Now, as long as you stick with a 16 inch layout, typically if you find one single stud in the center of this wall and get a mark on it, you know where every other stud is on the wall, be it for nailing base, be it for screwing cabinets, uh, anything that's going to anchor onto this wall, it's a, it's a killer time saver when the time comes instead of having to hunt and peck as to where those studs are. Another thing to consider when laying out your wall is what the existing structure is. Let's say these represent floor joists that are up above you that you're building the wall to, and this is your top plate that you're going to anchor to them. Uh, it's always a good idea, particularly if you have a 16 inch layout on your floor joist, to try to have your framing members that come below it line up with the 16 inch centers. Even if this isn't a weight bearing wall, you're not necessarily trying to hold it better. 
However, if there were a heat run coming through this space that you need to cut this plate out, and you need to turn that heat run and bring it down into this space, if you have a wall stud layout that's right in the center of these two floor joists, you're going to have to move framing from side to side to get out of the way of your utilities. Or if you have an electrical panel that's going to go in this space down here and you have a lot of electrical feeds coming down and you'd like to drill several holes in this top plate to have plenty of room to bring them down, it's always better to have it centered over top of your existing framing. So there you go. That's the ABCs of how and why you lay out a 16 inch on center wall the way you, we typically do it in the field. I uh, hope you found this information useful and if you need the next step, I, like I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, we have many other videos that pertain just to building walls, anchoring them, setting them up, making them straight. I'm Bob Schmidt with Home Remodel Workshop. Hope you found this useful. Thanks.